Welcome to PADT, Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies, where we make innovation work through simulation, product development, and rapid prototyping. As an ANSYS certified channel partner, we sell and support the full suite of ANSYS tools in the Southwest United States across six states. Our headquarters is in Tempe, Arizona, and we have offices near Salt Lake City, Utah, Los Angeles, California, Denver, Colorado, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. In addition, we provide training, mentoring, and simulation consulting with these ANSYS tools worldwide. Hey everyone, this is Manoj over at PADT. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get nodal and elemental IDs using ANSYS Mechanical. So here we are in ANSYS Mechanical. I have a simulation that has failed. And what I would normally do is go to the solution information, scroll down to the bottom, and try to find any error messages to find out why it might have failed. What I see here is that it gives me an error that says element 1497 has become highly distorted. That's great. I can go ahead and do my troubleshooting steps and try to solve the problem. However, let's say I do want to know where element 1497 is. If I go to the mesh, I don't have any way of identifying where exactly that element is, so I can choose to focus on that area when I'm troubleshooting my problem. Well, ANSYS has developed a new toolbar that you can add in into ANSYS Mechanical to accomplish that. So, you'll see a new toolbar all the way at the bottom here that gives you several different options for elemental and nodal information. For this particular case, we want to find element 1497. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go to Select Elements, by IDs, and type in 1497. You'll notice that you can insert in many nodal IDs as well uh, into the toolbox. When I go ahead and hit Select, it's going to highlight the element that I selected, which was 1497, and show me exactly where it is in my mesh. If I go ahead and go back to the deformation, I can clearly see that that's the element that's distorted significantly. Now, let's go ahead and go back to mesh and say, well, we want to look at the nodes on element 1497. I have a button here that shows me element to nodal numbers. If I click on it, the selected elements will give us the nodes for those elements. In this case, I get 1497, and I get all the nodes, including the mid-side nodes, their IDs, and their coordinates. Now, let's look at a different scenario. Let's say I want to find the nearest node to a particular point in my model. Maybe that's to compare between testing, that's to conform to standards, whatever the case may be. I don't have a physical vertex, so I have to find the nearest node to that point. What I can do is I can go to Find Nearest Node, go to From Coordinates, and type in my coordinates that I'm interested in. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and do 0, 0, 0, just for demonstration purposes. When I click on Find, it's going to identify the node that corresponds to the closest to that 0, 0, 0 value. It's going to give me the ID number and the coordinates for that node. And now what I can do is simply right click and go to create name selection and say that's going to be node 7158 at 000. And now I can use that name selection to create results. Now I can also simply use the nodal and elemental toggle selection filters to just simply click around the model. So let's say I was interested in this element what element is it? I can simply click on the element and say element. It will give me my element ID and then again like before I can go to element to nodal information as well. There's much more capability here but this gives you a pretty brief introduction to the extension called FE Info. I will attach a link to where you can download it below. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can jump on our website at padtinc.com or give us a call at 1-800-293-PADT 
or send us an email at support at paddinc.com.